Hello, and welcome to the Mr. 50mm YouTube channel. I know what you're thinking. Hey, what gives? The Nikon D600 is way newer than the D200. It's like six years apart. I know that doesn't sound like a fair matchup, but to that I say, we're not taking a look at this from a purely technical comparison. We're not trying to compare dynamic range or a high ISO performance. We're trying to look at the rendering characteristics of CCD versus a CMOS. And for that, I figure the generational gap might not be as big of a deal. Now, I could have done a matchup like the Nikon D200 versus the Canon 40D. Both are 10 megapixel sensors, with the Nikon being the CCD and the Canon being a CMOS. Uh, however, the D200 and the D600 are both Nikon products. So I figure even though they are generations apart, the Nikon color science, although it might have changed or evolved, uh, should be generally in line with the, you know what you expect from Nikon. So we're not, probably not gonna see massive differences. Uh, at least not with respect to the way the colors are tweaked and more with respect to how the imager would render the image. Maybe. Uh, so even though they are generations apart, that's kind of why I chose to do the D600 and the D200. Additionally, when you put the D600 into its crop mode, the output is about 10 megapixels. Uh, so both of them have very similar pixel densities. It's also just a bit easier for me as I have both of those cameras right here. D600, D200. So I won't need to flip around with adapters and such on both cameras. I'll just plop the lenses over to, you know, the other system when I'm shooting it. Now, that said, I, th I do also think that with this specific setup, if we do notice any differences in the way images are rendered, it'll really let us see what the actual differences between a CCD and CMOS are. Does the CCD really give us the magic factor? Or rather, you know, what is the actual difference in the way the images come out? I'm not actually gonna say whether or not one is better than the other, uh, or, you know, how good one rendition is to the other. Those are all fairly subjective. Now, before we get started, if you haven't already uh, had a look, uh, I did a review on the Nikon D200. It's nearly perfect, that's the short version. Uh, but if you want a refresher, have a look in the description below, or maybe I'll put a link up there. Uh, and, uh, you know, you can get an idea of what I think of the D200 before continuing. Uh, additionally, I also did review the D600. It's a very good camera with some baggage. Again, find out more with either the description below or a link above. Let's get into it. Additional background. As I said, uh, we are not trying to do a big technical difference. We're not trying to go over technical specification uh, and prove one is better than the other. We're not looking at dynamic range or high ISO performance. Uh, so the age gap is not a big difference, at least not in my opinion. Remember, we're trying to look at how the two different sensor technologies render images. So in order to conduct this look into the sensor technologies, I'll be doing a couple things. One, I will be trying to match the exposures exactly. We'll be doing the f-stop at the same f-stop on each photo. Shutter speeds will be matched, white balances and tints will be tuned to the same value and for the most part, we'll be hanging around ISO 100. Uh, although I will at some point probably do a higher ISO uh, comparison just to see how the different grain structure looks. Although we'll see. Now, I'll also be using the exact same lenses on each camera uh, and the raw files will be edited on the exact same raw editor. In this case, we'll be using raw therapy. Additionally, any color profiles that are loaded from either the software or baked into the 
raw files will be turned off in the color profile settings. So hopefully this will help us really get to the real question at hand. Is there a difference between CC and CMOS? And how do they render differently? Now, lastly, there's one thing I do want to point out, uh, and that is that when I actually did do these photos, the D200 seemed like it was always a little more underexposed than the uh, D600, even when shutter speed, f-stop, ISO were the same. So this might be, you know, differences in the way the two cameras actually, you know, their actual ISO performance, or maybe one of my cameras have a weird shutter thing, I don't know. But instead of trying to pull the D200 images up, I pushed the D600 images down to try to not introduce sensor noise on the D200 output that might sway my opinion or sway how we interpret the images coming out. Now, I also want to talk about, again, more technical reasons why the D600 was chosen. So as I said, in the crop mode, you get almost the same resolution as the D200. You get a 10 megapixel image in that DX mode. Now, this is because the pixel pitch of the D600 is very close to the pixel pitch of the D200, with the D600 having a pixel pitch of 5.95 microns where the D200 has a pixel pitch of 6.05 microns, at least according to the interwebs. Now, if we did the uh, D2X, if I like went out and bought one, we would actually have to compensate a bit for the output and squish the D2X photos to kind of make them match since that's like, you know, a 12 megapixel CMOS. Although I do admit the D2X and the D200 came out at a much closer time together. But as a result of those two extra megapixels, the D2X pixel pitch is a noticeably smaller 5.52 microns. Uh, so yeah, that is that. And if you're thinking, why didn't I choose the Canon 40D? Again, the pixel pitch, pitch thing kind of comes up. I do feel that this is kind of important just because we just happen to have a camera that is so close in pixel pitch to each other. You don't need to do any image scaling or any stuff. I know just mainly this is for me to save on effort on my part, but you know, I like to do things with less effort if I could. Uh, and if we look at the Canon 40D, uh, you actually will also find that since Canon is using an APS-C crop that is at 1.6 times, the pixel pitch is also more different. Instead of having basically the same uh, 6.05 microns that the D200 has at 1.5 crop, on the 40D you get 5.7 microns, which is more different than from the D600 to D200. Additionally, comparing across the two different brands would mean that we'd have to find a way to untangle Canon color science and Nikon color science. And I don't know how to do that. So. I figure stick Nikon all the way, and if there are major color differences, I am going to be unsure whether or not that is Nikon color science evolution or CCD CMOS differences. But you know, we'll see, we'll get what we get. So let's get into it. Photo side by sides. All right. So before we actually have a look at the pictures I took. Um, I also just wanted to give you a bit of background as to what's going on. So the photos that we're taking today, they're done in my lab. That is my backyard, the crucible of impartiality and facts. And again, or, you know, for clarity, we're gonna put the Nikon D600 photos on the left and the Nikon D200 photos on the right. Let's have a look at the photos.
Looking at the photos from the gallery, we can see that even with all the things that are the same, uh, there are some very specific differences. Firstly, if you look at color rendition, it is indeed different. At a glance, the CCD images are coming out rather warmer appearing, even though, again, white balance and tint has been moved so that both cameras are showing the same, or both camera files are showing the same value. Again, there are no raw like picture profiles uh, or raw profiles are just all set to no profile on raw therapy. And it still looks like the D200 gets more saturation in its images. Now, I can't be sure that what we're seeing just isn't the changes in Nikon color science, but it really is a bit of a difference. Now, if we have a look at the histograms on one of these photos, we can clearly see that the green and red channels look really similar. Uh, they're not exactly the same, but they're pretty close. I would chalk that up to more the differences of me shooting in the backyard and things moving around a bit. Uh, but they're broadly, like they match up. You could overlay them and they probably look pretty close. However, there's something that doesn't quite match up and that is the blue channel. When you look at that, you can see that on the D600, the CMOS's blue channel appears to be shifted quite a lot more to the right than the D200. They're definitely more, more, more blue. There's more blue that's shown up in brighter spots. There's more blue across the image than the D200. That's kind of a really neat thing to see that there's kind of a color difference. Now, if we play around with the D600 files, we can make it actually match the D200 CCD output a bit. Now, I did this by going into the color mixer and lowering the uh, blue channel down around 15% to 85%. So if we look at the photos again, and this time we have augmented the color, the channel mixer to lower that blue level, you can see that the images look pretty close. However, that doesn't tell the whole story. Now, in the next time, in this next section, I do kind of have a hard time putting into words what the differences are, but let's give it a go. So I'm going to take this same image again. That is again, now with the, uh, blue channel tweaked so that when we zoom out, the two images look pretty close. And what we're gonna do is zoom in to a stupid number. We're gonna look real close, like you would normally look at an image at like in 250% or whatever, but just we're gonna do this to emphasize the point. And when we have a look at the images side by side, you can see that in the, like the bokeh, the images, at least the uh, color gradients on the CCD, they have a different look to them. It's just, it's not the same as on the CCD. I'm not really sure how to put it, but it kind of just feels like the CCD images have a little more like texture in them. I kind of, I really want to avoid saying the word grain because it's not a grain, right? But if there's something in the color transitions that kind of really do look different on the CCD. Uh, and it's it's a bit weird. Like the C CMOS images look like they just, the trans color transitions are just a little more smooth. And that's kind of, I guess, the clinicalness that some people talk about or the image, the gradients are perfect transitions or whatnot, where on the CCD you kind of get kind of a different feel. Again, I'm having a bad time uh, describing it, but hopefully you can see it on the images left and right. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's really hard for me to discern. Or, I mean, sorry, it is easy, kind of easy to see the the, the texture differences or the, the way it's rendering. It's hard for me to describe. Maybe I'm just not good at words. So overall, there is a difference in the way these sensors are rendering images. I can at least point out two things specifically. Like I said, you get 
more blueness coming in on the CMOS. And you get that weird difference in the way color transitions are rendered. And, you know, those two things, I think it's kind of surprising to see that there are more or less visible differences that like they really do kind of impact the image. And I know for the uh, color, you can tune things so they they more look like they came out of a CCD, but I think that that texture part is a much harder thing to uh, recreate. So yeah, there we have it. All right, to conclude, there is a definite difference between the renderings between the CC and CMOS, at least in the case of the Nikon D200 versus the Nikon D600. I assume maybe between other brands, we'll, we'll probably see more pronounced or other differences. At this point though, I'm not 100% sure, at least with respect to the color response, this isn't more due to some tweaking in Nikon color science. However, the rendering of uh, color gradients between CMOS and CCD, I do feel that is more of a difference between the two technologies than the color science could reproduce. So I think that is probably the most definitive difference, even though I had a hard time describing it. Now, I may at some point have a look and see if we can squeeze out some more differences between other CCDs. Uh, I'm kind of curious to see whether or not, given the same CCD in a different camera, will the you know color signs have a big impact on the way the colors are rendered? That probably do, uh, but will it be as big as what we saw on the D200 and D600, where you could notably shift a ch color channel down and see a difference, uh, or you know bring images closer together? It well, it's kind of weird to do that, but you know, I I may give that a go because I do have another 10 megapixel CCD camera that is probably the same sensor between both bodies. I kind of have to look it up, but I suspect that they are, or if not the same, very closely related. But at any rate, what did you think about, you know, generally CCDs versus CMOS? Did my video help out? Did it make things more confusing? Let me know in the comments below. And as always, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Till next time.